We've talked about weight and balance, takeoff performance, and even visited landing performance. Now we need to figure out how to calculate climb performance from airport elevation to cruise altitude. But why do we need to single out this phase of flight? In my experience, the top two reasons are first, because most small aircraft climb at full power, you'll use more fuel during this phase. And second, because much of the power from your engine is being used to gain altitude, your forward progress will be less, and that will impact how much time is spent at cruise. Since a significant portion of flight planning is estimating how much time and fuel will be used to get to your location, it is important that we take a critical look at anything that impacts them, especially since running out of fuel before reaching our destination would be, well, <laughs> well, let's just say it would be more exciting than we'd really like. With that in mind, we'll need to answer three questions. One, how much time will it take to climb to my chosen altitude? Two, how much fuel will have been used? And three, how far from the airport will the aircraft be when reaching cruise altitude? Let's start with a scenario. You and a friend are flying your Archer 3 from Rochester International Airport, KRST, to Epley Airfield in Omaha, Nebraska, KOMA. Your plan is to fly in and visit Fontenelle Forest to climb, zip, and swing through the old growth tree canopy. And you've decided on flying at 4,500 feet MSL. This altitude will keep you well above the ground obstacles and underneath the crypt MOA. Currently, weather conditions are reported as winds 358 at 12 knots. The temperature is 22 degrees Celsius and the altimeter reading is 29.98. The winds and temperatures aloft are reported as 350 at 14 and 21 degrees Celsius for 3,000 feet and 348 at 16 and 17 degrees Celsius for 4,500 feet. Looking at the sectional, it appears our true course from KRST to KOMA will be 225 degrees. For these calculations, you'll be using the time, fuel, and distance climb charts. There are a couple of different charts you might run into. Piper uses a graphical chart, while Cessna uses a lookup table. Today, we'll be using the Piper chart. However, while they look different, the process for estimating performance using the Cessna tables is identical to the Piper charts. In either case, the first step is to calculate the pressure altitudes for both the airport and where we'd like to be cruising. Using the process we've demonstrated in previous videos, we used 2998 to calculate the pressure altitude correction of minus 60 feet. Subtracting that from the airport altitude of 1,317 equals 1,257 feet. Rounding pessimistically gives a pressure altitude of 1,000 feet. Making the same calculation for cruise altitude gives us 4,440 feet, and rounding pessimistically gives us a pressure altitude of 5,000 feet. Now we'll use the chart to calculate how much time, fuel, and distance it will take to climb from sea level to our chosen cruise altitude. On the chart, find the outside air temperature of 22 degrees and draw a vertical line straight up. Where that line crosses the 5,000 foot pressure altitude line, draw a horizontal line all the way across the chart. Where the horizontal line crosses the time reference line, draw a vertical line straight down to the time scale. Do the same where the horizontal line crosses the fuel and distance reference lines. Read the results where these vertical lines cross the scale markings. In our case, the time to climb from sea level to 5,000 feet is 10 minutes. Fuel used for the climb is 4 gallons and the distance from the airport is 15 nautical miles. But we're not done yet. Remember, this is the time, fuel, and distance calculation from sea level to cruise. To complete our estimations, we'll need to make the same calculations from sea level to the airport altitude, then subtract those values from the original numbers to get our final answer. To find the time to climb from sea level to airport altitude, we'll use exactly the same process. Starting with where the vertical line at 22 degrees Celsius crosses the 1,000 foot pressure altitude line, draw a new horizontal line all the way to the right of the chart. We'll use blue this time. Now draw vertical lines where this line crosses the time, fuel, and distance references. Reading the results indicates the time to climb from sea level to 1,000 feet is 2 minutes. Fuel usage is 1.5 gallons and distance is 3 nautical miles. Now we'll complete the estimations by subtracting what is needed to climb to the airport altitude from what is required to climb to cruise altitude. So 10 minutes minus 2 minutes leaves 8 minutes. 4 gallons minus 1.5 gallons leaves 2.5 gallons, and 15 nautical miles minus 3 nautical miles leaves 12 nautical miles. 
Now we know the time, fuel, and distance it will take to climb from the airport to cruise altitude. Oh, but wait, there's still more. The POH notes that all of these charts assume no wind situations. Since you want to impress your instructor and DPE, let's incorporate wind into our calculation. To do that, we'll use time and distance from the above calculations to estimate true airspeed during the climb, then use our E6B to determine the wind effect on our speed and distance. Now, please note, this won't be completely accurate, but we're trying to balance accuracy against complexity. The following should give you a reasonable estimate. First, divide the climb distance by the time to climb. Then, since the time is given in minutes, you'll need to multiply by 60 to get nautical miles per hour. For our scenario, divide 12 nautical miles by 8 minutes, and this equals 1.5 miles per minute. Multiplying this by 60 gives us 90 nautical miles per hour. Now, let's calculate the headwind component for the climb and add or subtract that from the zero wind speed to get estimated ground speed. Looking at the winds from ground level to 4,500 feet MSL, we see that they range from 12 to 16 knots and from 348 to 358 degrees. To make the estimation a little less complex, we'll average these numbers. So the average of 12, 14, and 16 knots is 14 knots, and the average of 348, 350, and 358 degrees is 352 degrees. Grabbing our E6B and flipping to the wind side, we'll dial in the wind direction of 352 degrees. Now, we'll draw the wind velocity of 14 knots straight up from the center. Next, we'll turn the dial to the course direction of 225 degrees, and we'll put the end of the wind line we drew previously on the airspeed from our previous calculations. In our case, that's 90 knots. Now read the ground speed at the center marker, and the result is 98 knots. The final step is to take that 98 knots and find out how far we would have traveled in the 8 minutes we've estimated it'll take to climb to 5,000 feet. 8 minutes divided by 60 minutes is 0 0.13333333 of an hour. <laughs> wow, that's a lot to get through. Multiplying that by 98 knots gives us 13.066666667. <laughs> that's also an ugly number. Rounding that pessimistically gives us 13 nautical miles. <laughs> so there you have it. It's been a tad bit complicated, but we've now answered all three questions. Based on the reported conditions, it should take us 8 minutes and 2.5 gallons to make the climb. And once we reach cruise altitude, we'll be 13 nautical miles from the airport. Most of the rest of the trip can be planned using the en route performance charts in the POH. In future videos, we'll take a look at completing our cross-country flight planning, as well as a look at using the Cessna performance tables to answer the same questions. We hope to see you then. If this video was helpful, please click the thumbs up. Also, please share this with two friends who might be struggling with performance calculations. Thank you for watching, fly safely, and we'll see you next time.